Hello creatives! I'm Sonia and this channel is Copycat. Copycat is a motion design research project that you can follow here on YouTube. Today we're studying Frida Kahlo and in this video I'm going to talk about her life, analyze her inspirations and artwork, and show you how to reference her common themes in your motion design work. All my sources are in the description below. It's hard to talk about Frida Kahlo without talking about her life. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter known for her many portraits and self-portraits. Inspired by the country's popular culture, she employed a naive folk art style to explore questions of identity, post-colonialism, gender, class, and race in Mexican society. In addition to belonging to the post-revolutionary Mexicayote movement, which sought to define a Mexican identity, Kahlo has been described as a surrealist or magical realist. Although she was disabled by polio as a child, Kahlo had been a promising student headed for medical school until a traffic accident at the age of 18, which caused her lifelong pain and medical problems. During her recovery, she returned to her childhood hobby of art with the idea of becoming an artist. Kahlo's interests in politics and art led to her joining the Mexican Communist Party in 1927, through which she met fellow Mexican artist Diego Rivera. Throughout the 1940s, Kahlo participated in exhibitions in Mexico and the United States and also worked as an art teacher. Kahlo's always fragile health began to decline in the same decade. She had her first solo exhibition in Mexico in 1953, shortly before her death in 1954 at the age of 47. Kahlo's first solo exhibition was called Frida Kahlo and Arte Popular. Arte Popular can be defined as traditional craftwork items created by common people for everyday use. Together, Kahlo and Rivera collected pre-Columbian ceramics, paper mache skeleton Judas figures, coconuts carved with faces, toys, masks, and ceramic beasts. For Kahlo, participating in collecting folk art aligned with her communist politics. It was a way of signaling solidarity with the people. Primitivism offers a reservoir of inspiration, forms, materials, and outlooks that function as an antidote to and critique of the dehumanizing aspects of modernity. One of the key contributions to modernism was her transformation of the Mexican religious genre of the ex voto. The Christian ex votos or retablos are generally small narrative paintings expressing thanks for blessings and healing miracles believed to be received from saints. She and Rivera collected more than 400 ex votos. Kahlo channeled the energy of these raw, passionate, bloody, visionary Catholicism artworks. Kahlo's paintings often look surreal, although they were expressions of her difficult life. I never painted dreams, I painted my own reality. She uses visual metaphors to express her life and pain. André Breton, the author of the Surrealist Manifesto, insisted Kahlo was a surrealist painter. Her work included traditional and ancient iconography, mythology, symbolism, eroticism, and botany, among other fantastical elements that drove the strong political commentary and psychological drama in her work. Kahlo painted this work on her return to Mexico following her separation from Diego Rivera, with whom she had been living in Detroit. It depicts a split into two identities. Frida dressed in a white lace dress with European-style embroidery, and Frida in a traditional Tejuana dress in reference to the dress that Diego loved. The heart of both Fridas are exposed and connected to one another. The first has cut her artery with scissors, staining her white skirt, and the other holds a small portrait of Rivera. The clouds in the background imbue the scene with a sense of doom. Frida Kahlo painted this self-portrait in 1945, by which time her renown, artistic and technical expression was fully developed. However, her relationship with Diego Rivera was incredibly complicated and her physical health had deteriorated significantly. She uses the self-portrait as a mask. Her stony expression masks all feeling. There is a very dark background covered with leaves on which a large dried out tree is painted. It is actually a tree stump, the part of the trunk that remained attached to the roots when the tree is cut down. Bare, with its few remaining branches broken, it alludes to both Frida's broken spine and above all, to death. The dull tone of the green ribbon reflects for her the color of the leaves and of sadness. Frida is in mourning. Above her tense features, overloaded with restraint, 
is one of Frida's most identifying attributes, her unibrow. It is so prominent that it resembles a bird, herself as a bird with outstretched wings, free at last. The monkey is small, thin, and hairy, much like Frida and also like her has dark hair. Their headdresses also match. He is a little alter ego that comforts her, takes care of her, and sits behind her to support her. With each delicate brushstroke, Frida conclusively registers, one by one, every minute detail of herself and her surroundings. Her palette is dominated by sad, dark, muted, and earthy tones, while bursts of color in her dress depict pain. The bleeding red of the decorations are the same color as her lips. With the tree stump, the monkey, the dress, the headdress, and even the face, Frida multiplies, spreading into each corner of the painting and expanding. All this comes together and creates one of the most devastating, sad, and distressing images. Kala described Pitahayas as such. It is fuchsia on the outside and hides the subtlety of a whitish gray pulp flecked with little black spots that are its seeds inside. It is a wonder. Fruits are like flowers. They speak to us in a provocative language and teach us things that are hidden. Kahlo often depicted vegetation as a symbol of fertility and regeneration. She drew directly from medical textbooks such that they often resembled scientific diagrams. Here, the pitahaya is sliced directly in two and mirrors a dissected female reproductive cell, an ovum. The depicted cell is undergoing cellular divisions. Errors in this reproductive process are the leading cause of miscarriages. Kahlo suffered multiple in her life, indicating this unassuming still life is in fact a very personal allusion to these traumatic life events. The personal iconography and extensive exhibition history of Pitahayas suggests the work is not only a still life, but an intimate self-portrait of Frida Kahlo herself. How can we use her work as inspiration for our motion design projects? Well, here are eight themes that she explores in depth. Frida Kahlo's plant-inspired paintings are frequently allegorical in emotional, sexual, and cultural terms. They express her sense of wit and play of double meanings. At times, she would even create half-plant, half-human hybrid characters, depicting herself and those around her. Just like the two Fridas we saw earlier, she often portrays herself, but in many different states, suggesting there are several sides of her. The heartbroken, the defiant, the physically broken, the activist, the animal lover. These personalities also overlap. Kahlo uses strong imagery to represent her pain. In the column, nails piercing her body are a symbol of the constant pain she faces. The largest ones, along with the column, mark the damage caused by the accident in 1925, while those clinging on her left breast refer, moreover, to an emotional pain, to her sense of solitude. Speaking of the bus accident, she painted the bus as she remembered the situation. She never dared to depict the accident directly, but painted the moment before the accident. The scene is calm, a stark contrast to the accident that follows. A frequent topic in her paintings is duality. She explores life and death. In this painting, she depicts Luther Burbank, a horticulturist as half man and half tree. A trunk whose roots wind through a skeleton under the ground, which may be that of Burbank himself. The man obtains his nourishment from the earth, but his corpse will be given back to it to be fed on in his turn. An early photograph of the Pita Hayas painting depicts the skeleton wielding the scythe with big round eyes and smiling, suggesting a dark humor considering the painting is about her infertility issues. The current version with its downturned eyes and frown was changed by Kahlo after hearing about the divorce. The skeleton gestures towards the pile of pitahayas resting on the soil. Through her self-portrait dedicated to Leon Trotsky, she proclaims her political allegiance to Trotskyism. The Mexican folk art inspired style illustrates her devotion to Mexicanidad. Framing herself between two curtains, she stages herself as a protagonist in a dramatic declaration of political allegiance. Death is the most intimate theme for Kahlo, who always lived in close contact with it. In this painting, Girl with Death Mask, the mask is a toy for the Day of the Dead. The marigolds in her hand are to be offered at a grave to guide the spirits of the dead. 
With all this fruitful information, I hope you will feel comfortable referencing Frida Kahlo's meaning and symbolism in your work. If you liked this video, check out the artist analysis of John Baldessari and please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment.